Uh, in this video, I first overview electronic structure and then talk about conductivity in terms of ability of materials to conduct electricity. We can classify substances as conductors, insulators, or semiconductors based on their ability to conduct electricity. This can be explained using band the theory that I will touch briefly upon. Uh, we have discussed atomic model in another video in which an atom consists of a nucleus that is surrounded by a cloud of electrons. Uh, electronic structure refers to the arrangement of electrons in an atom and the energy levels or orbitals in which the electrons reside. Uh, this figure shows schematically the orbitals or energy levels around the nucleus. The maximum number of electrons at each level can be determined by the principal quantum number n which indicates the energy level as 2n squared. The outermost energy level is called valence level or valence shell. In periodic table, we have in general 18 groups or columns. in which uh, elements at each group or column share similar chemical and physical properties, more specifically the same number of uh, valence electrons. Uh, here, the number of group indicates um, also uh, the number of valence electrons. Note that uh, in column 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. The number of valence electrons are 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, respectively, as indicated by red color numbers. This table shows the electron arrangement of potassium. calcium, bromine, with one, two, and seven electrons in the outermost energy level. Uh, let's take sodium with element electrons as an example. Uh, the first energy level closest to the nucleus can hold up to two electrons, while the second energy level can hold up to eight electrons. The remaining one electron in sodium is located in the third energy level. The single valence electron in the third energy level is easily lost, making sodium a highly reactive metal that can easily form ionic compounds. Uh, I should define here conduction band that is uh, the higher energy band which is empty in the ground state but it is located just above the valence band and can be easily populated by the valence electrons through thermal excitation or an external electrical field i emphasize again that the conduction band represents the energy levels that are not occupied by any electron. In the valence shell of sodium, electrons are loosely held. And in general, if number of electrons in the valence shell is less than four, the electrons does not need any special external energy to be conductive. 
and the conduction band overlaps tightly with the valence band. It means that the unoccupied energy levels of conductive conduction band are so close to the occupied energy levels towards the valence shell. This is why we show conduction band as, as if it is not distinguishable visually here from the valence shell. Again, a small energy difference is able to make it easy for electrons in in this case to be excited from the valence band to the conduction band. Uh, let's consider chlorine as the second example. It has seven electrons in its valence shell meaning that chlorine has almost occupied its valence band and there are no available energy levels for electrons to move into and become free to conduct electricity. In this case, there is a large band gap between the valence band and the conduction band. What is band gap? As shown in this figure, the region between the valence band and the conduction band is called the band gap, uh, which is the energy range where no electron states are allowed. For chlorine, the band gap is very large, and for chlorine to be a conductive, it requires lots of external energy for electrons to pass this gap. Uh, we have now been familiar with new concepts like a valence band, conduction band, and band gap, or forbidden band. Let's dive right into the band theory. Band theory is a theoretical framework used to explain how the energy levels of electrons in a substance are organized into bands. It describes also the electronic structure of substances, including metals or conductors, semiconductors and insulators. As we have already noticed, the size of the band gap between the valence and conduction bands determine the electrical conductivity of any substance. In metals, the valence and conduction bands overlap, resulting in a continuous band of energy level, levels and high conductivity. It means that electrons can freely move between valence and conduction bands. In insulators, the band gap is large, so few electrons are able to move onto the conduction band, making them uh, poor conductors of electricity. The band gap of an insulator can range from several, several electron volts to tens of electron volts, depending on the material. Uh, for example, the band gap of diamond, which is an insulator, is about 5.5 electron volt. In semiconductors, the band gap is smaller than uh, uh, insulators, allowing some electrons to move to the conduction band, resulting in moderate conductivity. An electron from the valence band can be excited to reach the conduction band if semiconductor takes say at least 1.1 electron volt of energy to create a conducting current in the material examples of common semiconductors include silicon 
which is the most widely used semiconductor in electronics particularly and the manufacturing of computer chips and other integrated circuits germanium uh, which uh, was the, one of the earliest semiconductor materials used in the development of electronic uh, devices gallium arsenide uh, is a compound semiconductor that is commonly used in higher speed electronic devices such as solar cells and LEDs indium phosphide uh, is another compound semiconductor that is commonly used in higher speed electronic devices as well as in fiber optic communication systems cadmium sulfide is semicon a semiconductor that is used in the production of photocells and light sensors <laughs>